Well, welcome back to Contrastly. My name is Simon Plant, and today we're going to be looking at a new feature in Lightroom and Photoshop called the Boundary Warp. Okay, so the Boundary Warp, um, this is um, a feature that will help you when you start to create panoramics, uh, either within Lightroom or within Photoshop. So the best way to, just to explain this is just, just, just get in and show you. So we're going to uh, create a panoramic. So I've shot these two images of this church and this hillside, and I'm going to select them both, and then I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go to Photo Merge, and you want to pick obviously the option for panorama so click on that and these are raw files uh, which is great because uh, it'll also once it's created the panoramic it's going to then spit out um, another DNG or a CR file whatever your native um, uh, raw file is so it's going to give you another raw, raw file to start working with which is uh, brilliant so the it's the same function in previous editions of the panoramic software except that now and you need to update your software to get this um, you'll see a new slider called boundary warp so what this does um, once you've selected or allow the software to automatically select the uh, the way it's going to project the panoramic it will then um, leave you with an image unless you obviously use auto crop which will automatically crop it it'll leave an image with a lot of gaps in the in the edges now if this detail towards the edges that you didn't want to crop off then your options were really only uh, uh, to clone and uh, create new pixels to fill in these gaps or to somehow warp it into shape and this is what the software does from what I can gather it basically uh, will warp the image hence the name boundary warp and uh, try and uh, fill in those gaps so let's go through it it's, there's not really much to show you um, I, well, I'm going to just quickly have a look at these different options here um, that one's really whack isn't it um, so Either that, or just sometimes just leave it on auto and let the software. And if I think it, I can do a better job, I will have a quick look at these different options. So let's leave it on auto. Uh, we don't want auto crop on, otherwise it defeats the object. So leave that off, and then we're just going to literally pull the slider until we get as as much information as we require. And I'm just going to pull this right up to 100. So uh, so that's it. So it's basically warped the image and obviously uh, filled in those gaps. <clears throat> now. A couple of things I should mention. This boundary warp will always try and keep your horizon straight for you. It's that clever. The only trouble is it's not as clever um, on this image because um, we haven't really got um, a distinct horizon on this picture. We've got this wall at the bottom of the frame, which is uh, is is not in a straight line. It's sort of going up at the frame here, and then we've got this hillside behind. So um, it hasn't done a very good job here, but but obviously we haven't really given it a lot to, to go by. So uh, you know. It, Maybe this image is straight, but this wall is maybe, I think, uh, from what I can remember, uh, at a funny angle, and it's probably deceiving our eyes somewhat. So we may want to go in and just manually adjust that afterwards. So that is basically the boundary wall. There's not a lot more to it than that. So um, all you've got to do then is click Merge, but that's not all there is uh, to this video. So I'm going to show you a couple of other little things. So let's click Merge, and we'll go back into Lightroom. Okay, so we're back in Lightroom, and here's the uh, raw file that uh, Photo Merge uh, Panoramic software has uh, spat out for us, and uh, it's done a pretty good job. Um, the kind of things you ought to watch um, as well, in that is if you've got strong verticals in your image, i.e., a church tower but uh, close to the edge or maybe trees close to the edge or maybe it's a uh, lamppost close to the edge of the frame you will likely find that this uh, boundary warp will um, will distort that and you'll get a funny sort of curvature to the image um, so you need to be, be aware of that I haven't got anything close to the edge here that seems to be affected which is great um, if it if I had you could obviously go in and try a sort of like the liquify tool to straighten that out for you uh, maybe the adaptive wide angle filter might help but maybe too global of an adjustment so uh, so there is what I'm trying to say there is a workaround to that um, if need be Having inspected this image, um, I've noticed, and I don't know if you're going to pick this up, but I've noticed that my 
windows here on my image look a bit skew if and so the first thing I thought is oh boundary warp it's distorted the windows but then they're not really close to the edge of the frame so I went back to my raw file here uh, the single shot and uh, they you know they're not they're not at a funny angle on that one um, so um, my next culprit was uh, something actually another photographer um, had raised and I actually kind of dismissed it I like you I, I watch videos and do more training you never stop learning and you sometimes I don't learn anything sometimes I learn a new way of doing something I've always done which is better sometimes uh, I learn something completely new that I never knew so there's you never never stop learning and there's a couple of people I follow quite closely who I respect in the industry and this guy he's a very well known photographer I'm not gonna mention names he he said I never use automatic stitching software. It distorts my images. And I was sat there thinking, oh, um, I've, that, I've not found that. And maybe a few years ago, um, there was always, you know, could get problematic images that just didn't stitch for one reason or another, and you had to manually go in and stitch it. But on the whole, the last, at least the last three years, the software's got so good, you know, you don't even need to use a bloody tripod these days to, to tra take uh, good panoramics. So I've not really noticed anything really distorting in my work, so, uh, or not to the degree that I've sort of been worried. Um, until now, <laughs> and today, I've just looked at this, I thought, you know what, I bet it is the actually automatic uh, the stitching software, not boundary warp, but the actual software has gone in, and uh, and it's just, because it obviously has to, you know, adjust and pull and push the image to make it line up. Sometimes, I suppose, you know, it does, you know, you do get problems, and I've noticed it in this church, and like I said, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well. Let me see if I can get the three up, and that might maybe help let's have a look so on this one um again it's gonna be so small on 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 the, the screen but on this one i just noticed that the windows were kind of leading out to the right as opposed to the rest of the image so i think that is what it is so it's not the boundary warp i don't think on this it is just the software so keep an eye on that um let's say it's not something that i've really ever come across that I, i've i've been aware of um until this image funny enough so um we may you know the way around that would be going and manually stitch this and maybe that's a uh, maybe that is something for a future video um i don't know but to have a little chat about that and maybe we'll do a manual stitch uh, image on this so so with this image, all I would do on this particular image is probably just go in uh, and uh, just adjust um, the uh, the uh, verticals on this because you know being uh, the image it is, I shot this on a slightly longer lens to uh, avoid any distortion, but I'm still kind of slightly looking up at the image. So what I would do um, if I felt the need to. Um, is maybe get go into the manual settings on the lens corrections and just correct my verticals a little bit. Um, I do think it needs to rotate to level it up a little bit, but not that way. And if we look at the guides on the image, we can uh, roughly work that out. So around there, so that that's looking uh, that looks that's look, looking a bit better. Other thing we can do is to click on the constrained crop, and that will just get rid of our extra bits of white areas there again. Um, always a good tip here if you are shooting buildings and you're not using a perspective control lens, um, then it's always a good idea to allow a little bit extra um, room, extra bleed around your picture. Because obviously, if you shot this any tighter, um, I would have, um, with the with these adjustments, I'd have lost the edge of the uh, church tower here. So if you are planning on shooting, Shooting some uh, architecture, I would advise just allow a little extra bleed in case you want to correct any distortions in the image. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, short and sweet, but hopefully it's given you a bit of a, a insight into that new feature and uh, some problems that can arise. And uh, I hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers.